If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. In order to calculate the average induced EMF, we have to take a look at the following equation that relates the EMF to the so-called magnetic flux. And we can see from this equation that the magnitude of the induced EMF is equal to the magnitude of the change in flux divided by the amount of time that has passed. And so we know that magnetic flux is equal to the magnetic field times the area of the loop times the cosine of some angle. The magnetic field strength is not changing, so the quantity B is going to be remaining fixed. Also, the direction of the magnetic field is not changing, so the angle theta remains fixed. But what is changing is the term area, and the reason for that is because the loop starts out as a circle and then is closed over a particular time interval to become a point. So in essence, the final area of this loop is zero, and the initial area is going to be the area of a circle. So when it comes time to doing the change in flux in this equation, what we want to do is consider that there is a change in area. So let's take a closer look at that. And so to indicate that change in area, we've written it as delta A. Now we can break the delta A further down. We can write it as the final area minus the initial area. Again, the final area is going to equal zero. So this is going to be eliminated. And then the initial area is pi r squared. And with this in mind, we're now ready to plug in the known values. The magnetic field again was given to us in Tesla. The time interval was given to us in seconds. The initial radius of the loop was given to us in centimeters. So we're going to actually have to move the decimal point over two places to the left to convert that into the standard unit of meters. So that would be the radius. And then the angle is simply going to be zero degrees. And the reason for that is because the magnetic field is pointing into the page. And the so-called normal line, which is perpendicular to the plane of the loop, that's also pointing uh, sort of into the page. And so we can see that the angle between the magnetic field and that normal line would be zero degrees. So we can go ahead and plug in all the known information. And when you compute that, you should get approximately 3.4 times 10 to the minus 2 volts. And since that's such a small number of volts, we can convert it into millivolts by remembering that one volt is 1,000 millivolts. And when you perform that conversion, you should get roughly 34 millivolts, and that is indeed the correct answer. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel. You can send in your own question to this email address, and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.